Hello, you're listening to On Israel in Al Monitor. I'm Ben Kaspit from Tel Aviv. Naftali Bennett's government has completed its first 100-day run in fairly reasonable shape. Considering this was a government that no one in Israel believed could ever be formed, let alone survive for more than a month or two, one might even say it's been successful so far. With the help of uh, Finance Minister Avigdor Lieberman, Bennett uh, won preliminary Knesset approval for the state budget. He is orchestrating nationwide booster vaccination drive, rebuilding Israeli foreign relations, and has already met with King Abdullah in Jordan, President Biden in Washington, and President Assisi in Egypt. But he is not performing well in the polls despite these achievements. The burden of proof on his shoulders is made heavier by the shaming and delegitimization campaigns being mounted by Benjamin Netanyahu's many followers on the political right, as well as ultra-Orthodox voters and some of Bennett's Yamina party voters who view the government he has formed with leftists and Arabs as bordering on treason. We will discuss the state of the Bennett-Lapid government as it marks its first 100 days with our On Israel guest, the political correspondent of Israel's top-rated Channel 12 News, Dana Weiss. Weiss, a lawyer by training, has been covering Israel's premiership as closely as possible for the past two decades. We'll talk with her about the lifespan of the new government, We'll ask whether Naftali Bennett can reinvent himself and create a voter base from scratch. And we'll examine the intriguing question of what Benjamin Netanyahu could do to bring Bennett down and return to the place he sees as his natural habitat, the Prime Minister's office. Dana Wise joins us right after this short break. If you're listening to this podcast, you obviously care about the Middle East. And if you do, you should probably be reading El Monitor. El Monitor is a global newsroom headquartered in Washington, D.C., with a network of over 160 contributors around the world. El Monitor offers first-class reporting and analysis from a range of perspectives and an approach that represents the highest journalistic standards, as well as an award-winning commitment to press freedom and independence. If you haven't done so already, visit us at elmonitor.com, check out our articles, and sign up for our free newsletters. There's a lot to choose from, including the Week in Review, an essay that offers unusual insights and forecasts into the region based upon El Monitor's outstanding reporting. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to our El Monitor podcast on your favorite podcast platform, on Israel with Ben Caspit, and on the Middle East with me. Andrew Parasoliti. Now I am uh, very happy to say hello to my friend and colleague, uh, Channel 12's uh, diplomatic correspondent and senior analyst, Dana Weiss. Shalom, Dana. Shalom, Ben. Thank you for joining us here in uh, On Israel in Al Monitor. And let's uh, straight, Thank you for having uh, me. Yes, uh, straight dive uh, into business. And I'll ask you the following. Uh, Prime Minister Bennett has just made it onto Time Magazine's 2021 list of the 100 most influential people in the world. But he's not the first nor the, the last Israeli prime minister to do so. What makes this special is the identity of the man who wrote Time's endorsement of Bennett. None other than the leader of Israel's Arab Islamist party, Knesset member Mahmoud Abbas, whose Ram party has become the first Arab party to ever join an Israeli government. To what extent do you view this as historically significant? Is it perhaps maybe a temporary constellation that will fade the minute Israel and Hamas engage in their next round of fighting? Well, you know, that's really a great point. Um, I think uh, it, what comes to mind is that in Israeli politics, exact, and actually in the region itself, in the Middle East, the best thing to say is expect the unexpected. 
and never say never because it's almost science fiction to think that this could have happened, that the extreme leader, the leader of the extreme right uh, party, Naftali Bennett, who was the head of the settlers and, you know, really to the right of Netanyahu would be endorsed by someone who was until the last round of elections, uh, almost an outcast in Israeli politics, certainly for any right wing party that thought about uh, forming a government. So here we are seeing this, this alliance, which couldn't have happened half a year ago. Um, and if you'd ask me, and I'm sure you would say the same answer a half a year ago, do we think it's impossible? We would say, no, you're kidding. That's something we'll never see. So the fact that uh, Bennett was endorsed by Abbas is certainly the, the big story about this uh, government. And, you know, McLuhan said that the med medium is the message. I think this is the case. The message of this government is it's everything you couldn't think what happened in Israeli politics is happening. Here we have a leader, um, a prime minister, who two years ago was looking for a new career after he couldn't pass, pass the threshold and was out of Knesset. And here he is sitting as prime minister. And we also have um, the extreme left party, Meretz, sitting with a right-wing party. So everything is unaccepted and unimaginable, but it's happening. It's like uh, they said uh, the bastards are rewriting the rules, uh, but they didn't uh, <laughs> alert anyone, including, by the way, uh, for a former Prime Minister Ben Netanyahu. And I will ask you uh, in a short while about this uh, weird government. Um, I want to ask you about the stability. Uh, we, we are now uh, uh, issuing uh, this. This podcast is special for uh, 100 years of uh, of the Bennett government, and the budget has uh, made it through uh, its first reading, and seems uh, set for final approval in November. Does that mean, in your opinion, Dana Weiss, that the government will survive at least until 2023, or do you see other developments? that might destabilize it because we are uh, finally uh, in the bottom line, we're in the Middle East and in Israel. Well, the budget is a big, is a big issue and um, it's, it's certainly um, a marker. And I know for a fact that even in the White House, they were very concerned and thought about postponing uh, Bennett's uh, visit to the White House and meeting uh, President Biden till after the budget. But when they got um, assertions and, and heard that it, it's going to pass, they understood that this meant that this government is here to stay. You know, we never say never, as I told you, um, in Israeli politics, but certainly the fact that they managed to secure a budget and it seems that seems like they're going to pass it in the Knesset, have final approval, there would be no reason and no way to break up this coalition. None of the parties would have an interest to do so and it would be very hard for the opposition to try and tempt someone out of this government. So certainly it is, a, um, it is going to be cementing this uh, government for the foreseeing future till 2023. And that gives um, Bennett leverage over his partners. And it certainly will stir some heat in the Likud party and in the opposition. Uh, but you have to remember that uh, the previous government and that strange coalition between Netanyahu and Gantz fell because of the budget and Israel actually uh, worked without a budget for over two years. So it's good for the country and it's also good for politics. So I think these two together um, can give us some kind of political stability. And for Israel, two years of stability is a long time. And this is, this is exactly what I want to talk uh, to you with you next about the stability. Everyone keeps saying that the government coalition is very fragile. On the other hand, there is a theory that says that the government's uh, very, very strength uh, stems from the weakness. Almost all of its components have no choice but to stick it uh, uh, out uh, because uh, the alternative is far worse. Even the fate of Mansour Abbas depends on the fate of uh, this government. How do you see this issue? And uh, to what extent do you think something like a clash with Gaza it could uh, dismantle the government? I think that's a very interesting uh, point because uh, Abbas, 
the leader of the Muslim party has come up with a new formula up to this round of election. Usually the, um, the Arab representatives were always about two issues. They were about social issues of the Arab population, but they were also raising a higher flag about the, the, the conflict and about being rep and representing the Palestinian issue in the government. And that made it very hard for them to join any coalition. Abbas has said, I'm changing things. I'm, we're not going to solve the, um, you know, the Palestinian issue now, certainly not with this government. So instead of sitting from the outside, it's time that the Arabs take a, take a seat around the table where decisions are made and start influencing their day-to-day -day life. And we've just heard um, uh, a prominent leader from that party in an interview yesterday on our channel saying, listen, we're not going to make any uh, progress if we sit in the opposition and Gaza is not a problem that's going away. So even if we wait for the next government, they're going to be faced with Gaza. He's basically said, don't think we're going to um, tear this government apart because issues such as Gaza, we want peace, we understand that, but we want to take care of our people first. And I think it's true, as you mentioned, for every component of this, fan of this uh, government, you know, think about the Ministry of Health Nitsan Horowitz, who's very busy these days with the COVID, obviously. But this is a guy who was the leader of a very small left-wing party who never dreamt, dreamt of being a minister. He or, almost accepted the fact that he will always sit in the opposition in his political career. And here he is sitting in this prominent position in the government. Think about our minister of uh, transportation, Merav Michaeli, who um, basically managed to save her um, a labor party uh, from being, you know, wiped of the political maps. Not, she didn't even dream of being a minister, not alone a cabinet minister and a very prominent minister. So everyone in this government knows that nothing is waiting for him on the outside and it's best, best to stick together. And that is a very powerful power in politics. Let's talk about Prime Minister Bennett. Some of Bennett's uh, success so far stems from his uh, extraordinary reception in Washington. Uh, I think you've been there. His achievement in restoring relations with Jordan and its monarch and the warm welcome he, has, uh, he was given by Egyptian President Assisi. How do you explain this? Did their a personal dislike of Netanyahu turn all these leaders into Bennett fans despite is religious right-wing ideology that places him to the right of Netanyahu. I think that's exactly the point. I mean, that's the starter. The starter is that he is not Netanyahu. And I think this administration has gone out of his way to make, you know, to make everyone understand that they prefer anyone else but Netanyahu, especially with the fact that they have to deal with Iran and maybe going back to the deal and they remember what Netanyahu, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Netanyahu did to Obama. And I want to remind you and our listeners, of course, that Biden, President Biden was there as vice president. So he knows firsthand what it means to deal with Netanyahu. And um, I think they look at this government as an interesting experiment. Um, and I think they can, they can, you know, they can um, understand this and they can appreciate the fact that they're going for a different kind of government that is a unity government that is bringing all these different people to the table. So I think for Biden, um, Bennett is interesting. I just think he understands he can do business with him. I think he understands it's not Netanyahu. And I think he understands it's a better partner, given the fact that he has to negotiate with Iran or come up with some kind of solution to Iran. And he can rely on Naftali Bennett, not that Naftali Bennett won't take care of Israel's interests, but he's not looking for a fight with the administration. Now, once President Biden gives um, you know, uh, the endorsement to Naftali Bennett, then Assisi understands that, as usual, if he wants to get things from Washington, it's always good to have good relations with the person sitting in Balfour Street in Jerusalem, the prime minister. So it's like kind of a domino effect. Um, and I think um, for one thing, you know, for 12 years, the Israeli public has been given the notion that there's, it's either Netanyahu or the end of the state of Israel. No one can do the job better than Netanyahu. He ran on a campaign saying that he's a leader from a different league. You know, he had the billboards with him shaking hands with Prime Minister 
President Trump and him shaking hands with, with Putin to say that no one else can play the, the um, international league. And here we see Bennett playing the international league. And as I mentioned Trump, again, we have to remember the fact that Netanyahu aligned with Trump and was all in on team Trump is a key factor when President Biden looks at Naftali Bennett. He knows he's not going to do the same. He knows that he wants to reach for bipartisan. You know, um, he goes back to the bipartisan policy in the American in the American public and American politics. So, it's not Netanyahu. It's not Trump's friend. It's Naftali Bennett. He's a young leader. It's easier to do business with with him. He's coming with a different kind of government, and he 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 he. It's 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 something they want to bet on. I, I did not I did not plan to ask you this, but it is a, it's relatively new. I don't know if you have it, had a chance to see it yet, because talking about Netanyahu, they just uploaded a, a, a short video of the former prime minister mocking uh, Prime Minister Bennett and President Biden, uh, uh, hinting that Biden that Net, uh, Bennett was so successful in Washington that uh, the president actually fell asleep. Uh, I don't think that Netanyahu is aware to, to, to the extent of the damage he can cause to himself in such a video. Uh, yes, but I think, you know, Netanyahu... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Because I don't think he you know, plans to. He plans to I don't return. think the United States bases its policies on, on videos that you see here in Israel. Thank God uh, for but this. But I understand that. The, what? Thank God for this. Yes, if yeah. Did. I want to talk to you a little about Benny Gantz. In an interview we gave a foreign policy magazine last week, the defense minister presented a stand that was significant, significantly different than Bennett's position on the Iran deal, basically saying Israel could accept a return to the agreement with Iran. Do you think we are seeing a, substant, a substant, substantive disagreement? or simply a tactical maneuver? And to what extent is Gantz playing a political game? People are saying that the only uh, one who could realistically bring down the Bennett government is Gantz if he realigns himself with Netanyahu. You know, Benny Gantz is, uh, is really the interesting story because he's having a hard time to swallow this government. He's looking at this government and he's saying to himself, why, why do I have to sit under Naftali Bennett? And why do I have to take all this kind of government with, it's, it's a big government, you know, with a lot of ministers. And uh, he, he, his former partner, Yair Lapid, is, is going to be prime minister after Naftali Bennett. And he remembers the hard time he got from Yair Lapid when he went for a unity government with Netanyahu. So he's saying to himself, why do I have to sit here and see how they turned around on all the promises? Well, when I did that, they gave me such a hard time. And I think he's convincing himself that he has an alternative, that, that he can really form a government with Netanyahu. But hey, he's the one who knows what it means to trust Netanyahu's promises. He was there. He believed in Netanyahu. He paid a very a high political price for it. And he saw where it got him. But uh, Benny Gantz is going around very, um, I mean, he's unhappy and he's showing everyone this unhappiness. They, when it comes to closed doors and when it comes to the defense issues, I understand they're working very well together. And I think he's also working well with Yair Lapid when it comes to closed doors. But uh, Benny Gantz is, 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 is sure he could have been prime minister. And I think this is something that is very hard for him to swallow. As for the deal, um, I know for a fact that at the end of the day, Israel's policy is not, the new policy is not no deal like Netanyahu saying any deal is a bad deal. That's it. It's better off without a deal. I think the policy that um, Naftali Bennett and his government are now trying to pursue with the Americans is going back to the deal is bad. But if you come up with a better deal, a much more, you know, that looks for the future and takes cares of all our concerns, our regional concerns, or, 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 or the fact that it really will bind uh, Iranians to the promise, there's something to talk about. But if you're not coming up with a deal, then we need to talk about what's your plan B. So I think Gantz, went ahead and 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 talked about a, a, a better deal 
And I think it's also what Benedict says in closed rooms, he wouldn't say it outside. So there is no real crisis between these two. Uh, we are approaching uh, uh, the final questions. I, I want to ask you about uh, Naftali Bennett, that uh, despite his relative uh, achievements, he does not seem to be filling the prime minister's shoes yet. Most Israelis don't see him as a legitimate leader, especially since the Amina party has only got seven mandates and one of them quit. Do you think he can grow? Can he create a new voter base? Is he uh, eyeing the political center and can he uh, mold his uh, ideologies to fit that slot? Do you see him establishing a new broader based uh, party, not just of religious right wing uh, voters? You know, I was asking myself that, and then I reminded myself that he's the guy who was sure, not only that he can be prime minister, but that he has to be prime minister and he will be prime minister. Now, he was saying that when he had six seats, 10 seats, 12 seats, when he got four seats, he's never lost sight of the fact that he believes that he should be prime minister. And here he is sitting in the prime minister's office. So even if at, after two years, he won't have voters to get him there for another four years or another term. He's achieved his goal. He's going down in the history book as the prime minister of Israel. So I think he is wisely um, behaving in the fact that he's saying, I'm not thinking about politics now. I'm thinking about being the best prime minister I can be. And at the end of the day, that's the only thing that might get me another term. Now, he says he wants to go ahead with no drama. He wants his term to be a no drama term. He wants to, his term to be uh, about working, about you know, getting things done, about working for the public, about making the right decisions without politics. It's something that we haven't seen in a while. And you know, we'll have to see what the public says about it. But at the end of the day, this is the guy who's sitting in the prime minister's office with only six seats, and he's already achieved that. So, you know, the guy has made it, him. and I totally yeah. agree with you. And, and the, it's not only this, he's the first one, and you will not, not be able to take it uh, from him. Uh, uh, the first religious uh, Yarmulka wearing Israeli that is a prime minister, and it's, it's, it's a real yeah. history. Yes, and you know, it reminds me that uh, I think um, in, in Netanyahu's fourth term, one of his aides told him, look, don't think about your next term. Just wake up in the morning and think how you're going to be the best prime minister that you can and look for the center of the Israelis. And if you do that, A, you will have another term because you will be a good prime minister. And two, you will go down in the history books as a great prime minister. But if you sit in that seat and always think about survival, you're not going to do your job right. At the end of the day, the public will not be there for you. So maybe maybe this is something that Naftali Bennett is, is, is trying to prove otherwise, but this is all a big experiment. We're going to yes. have to see how it works out. A few words about Netanyahu. People uh, said he would leave politics, but he hasn't. They said he would uh, calm down after losing power, but he hasn't. What's his game plan, in your opinion? Will, he, uh, will his corruption trial force him to remain in a, a politica, political influential position? Does he truly believe he can come back? In other words, can you guess what's going through his head these days? Well, you're a greater expert on Netanyahu than I am. So, you know, I'd love to hear what you think. Personally, <laughs> I think it's all about the trial. I think he has to th figure out what's best for him. I know that for I know that he thought that staying in office as prime minister was the best tactics um, to go through this trial with minimum harm. Um, and I think he has to come up with a strategy. Is it going to help him staying in the Knesset? I'm not sure it's the same answer. I'm not sure it's the same answer. Maybe if he goes into trial, uh, not as a political figure, it will be very. E it will be easier to uh, for the general, for the attorney general to try and kind of deal with him, for the judges to try and understand that he paid a political price for the for the uh, for the uh, you know for, for standing for taking these charges. It's a different. It's a different. It's a different math when it comes to going into court if you're a prime minister or going to court if you're just a member of an opposition or a, or a member of Knesset. But, you know, I'd, I'm not sure where he's going, but um, I'm sure it has to do with a trial and we have to see, you know, what do you think? Is he here to stay? Is he going? I think we'll have to wait a couple of months to see. 
I will, I will do what the judges in the Supreme Court in Israel are doing. I agree <laughs> <laughs> to, to what my, my colleague has just said, because we, we can never uh, know it right now. I think he doesn't know himself. He's playing it uh, on a daily basis. He made a lot of mistakes. The exits, uh, the, the opportunity, his opportunities uh, to have a, a decent exi, exit, uh, I, I think he's, uh, he's losing it. But the, you, in Israel, you can never know. I, I have to ask you in the final question about a uh, thing you, you, you touched in the first uh, part of the, uh, this conversation. How do you see the fact that this government has brought together the left and right, Bennett, Shaked, Saar, Elkin, on one hand, with oh, Nitzan Horowitz, Merav Michaeli, Tamar Zandberg, on the other hand, is this a true change that signals increased tor- tolerance and cooperation in the political map in Israel? Or, or is the glue holding it all together is the burning hate, hatred of Benjamin Netanyahu, which will melt uh, once Netanyahu leaves the scene? Well, I know that they are very... The, the, if, if someone is anxious that Netanyahu doesn't leave and stays on, it's those you know, the party members and of course and Naftali Bennett because it's good for them. It's the best glue for them to stay together because once Netanyahu leaves, then the political map will change and the Likud party will find a leader and then, you know, it would be much more, it would be more natural for Gidon Sar and Bennett to come sit with the Likud than stay with this unusual partnership with all the left-wing members that you've just, you know, leaders that you've just um, mentioned. But um, in the short term, I think that this government is very important for trying to take down the hatred, take down the diversity, you know, the the the, the, um, the uh, tension between the camps, to to try and come up with something which is more calm, you know, to hear Naftali Bennett say how he appreciates Mirav Michaeli or Ayelet Shaked, his member from the Yamina Party, talk about Nitzan Haovitz doing such a great job. It's things we couldn't think would be possible. And, you know, it's, it, it's a good example, even for people on the street to take down tension and the political tension. You know, we had two years of very fierce and, and ugly um, election cycles. Um, but on the long term, we still have to face our existential issue. And that is what kind of Israel do we want to see in 10 and 15 years or 20 years? And that we have then to answer that question, we must go through the Palestinian issue. What kind of country do we want to see here? Do we want to work to a one-state solution? Can a one-state solution work? Is it the last minute for a two-state solution? This problem is not going away. And this government is saying, we're not going to deal with the political, with the Palestinian conflict, because obviously we can't come up with any kind of uh, status, any kind of agreement with all these components around the table. So let's push that problem aside, deal with economy, deal with COVID, deal with getting the political uh, climate back to normal. But two years from now, four years from now, that problem is going to be on our table. It's just gonna be more urgent to deal with it. So this government can't deal with the most basic question we have to ask ourselves, what kind of Israel do we want and what kind of Israel can last and, and be a viable, strong state in this region. So I, I will translate it and say it, it's a government that it is nice to have, but not must have. And this Palestinian issue that you're, you're just talking about can even crash uh, in, into us, not even in four years, but even in four days, because anything can happen in any time. And this I was- I think a, it's a must, I just, just one, I think it's a must have for the first stage. We don't know, maybe it will take us to a second stage with different understanding between the sides, because what you see from here is not what you see from the opposition. So maybe this is the first step to a new kind of political understanding, and maybe we're just kicking the can down the road. And I like very much this optimistic uh, finale in Sukkot. (laughs) We say Chag Sameach, Happy Yellow Holidays. It was a fascinating talk. Dana Weiss, thank you for joining us here in uh, in Al Monitor, we'll take now a short break and come back uh, uh, with some final thoughts. Toda, Dana. Toda. I'm Andrew Parasoliti, president of the award winning media news site, El Monitor, where we cover the Middle East with some of the best reporters and columnists anywhere. And I'm excited to announce our new podcast, On the Middle East where each week I will interview newsmakers from the U.S. and the region about the latest news and trends with additional commentary from our on-the-ground correspondents. 
Those of you who follow the region know that what happens in the Middle East doesn't stay in the Middle East. And to cite another great movie line, every time the U.S. tries to get out, the region pulls us back. Your time is valuable, so let me promise you this. You will learn something and you will never be bored because each week we'll be talking with and listening to those leaders who are making the news and shaping the trends in this critical and fascinating region. So please subscribe to On the Middle East with me, Andrew Parasoliti. Thank you for staying with us. According to Dana Weiss, uh, the senior analyst and political uh, correspondent of Channel 12 in Israel, the Bennett Lapid government seems to be uh, right here with us and not going anywhere. She told us that uh, in the White House, the hesitations and people thought that it was better to postpone the, the meeting between President Biden and Naftali Bennett to after the approval of the state budget uh, in the Knesset uh, in uh, November. But then finally they realized after checking that the budget will be approved and this government is probably here to stay. Talking about the, the coalition itself, uh, Dana Weiss thinks that uh, it can survive even a clash with Gaza uh, and she quoted the senior uh, uh, politician from Ram, the, the Muslim Brotherhood Party that is a part, a crucial part of Bennett Lapid's uh, coalition, saying that uh, we are not going uh, to make any progress for our, our voters and our people if we will be outside. And it's about time for us not to take care on uh, uh, things that happens in, uh, in Gaza or in the West Bank, but to take care of our people in the inside. And she mentioned people like uh, Health Minister Nitzan Horowitz from Meretz and the uh, Transportation Minister Merav Mikhaili from Labor that never planned to be in coalition in the government as a, a senior ministers, but only this coalition gave them the chance to do so and this is actually the strength of the Bennett Lapid coalition. When I ask her uh, what is the secret of Naftali Bennett, he is a right wing ideologist, a religious prime minister, and, and still uh, leaders like, like President Biden, like King Abdullah from Jordan, and President Al Sisi from Egypt gave, me, gave him so, so much respect. Uh, uh, contrary to what they gave Netanyahu lately, and she said that the starter is that uh, the, the ABB, the famous ABB, anything but BB, that Bennett is not Netanyahu. And uh, they all think that this government in Israel is a very interesting ex experiment. And actually, uh, for example, the Americans are uh, taking part in this uh, experiment. We don't have any guarantee that it is going to, be, to succeed, but it's going on. And she, she defined the, these meetings between uh, Bennett and Biden and Bennett and, and Assisi as, uh, as endorsements of, uh, of all these people to this young uh, government. Uh, she said that, the, you know, what Israel is believed, many Israelis believed for many years that it's either Netanyahu or the destruction of Israel uh, is now proven to be uh, uh, wrong because uh, Naftali Bennett uh, is prime minister and he plays now in the International League and the score is not so bad and the sun uh, is keeping uh, shining or rising uh, every day in the east. So uh, everything is possible and Bennett is not uh, now not uh, thinking about his base, his voter base, uh, uh, he's thinking about the state. And uh, maybe this is a very good formula for this government to survive. I hope you found it interesting. And uh, I'll see you here next time in On Israel, in Al Monitor. I'm Ben Kaspit from Tel Aviv. Thank you and bye bye. <laughs>